resume speaks for itself. Daytona, Indy, Formula One World Championship. But you checked a box last week that I don't think you've checked yet. You, you broke the internet. And I've been wondering why you, why did you choose to be the one to break the news of Andretti Global? Well, that's that's easy because uh, you know I do quite a few interviews, you know, especially now with the Zoom, the Zoom era and so forth around the world. And uh, there's always uh, anything news about Michael, and you know, because the word has it has been out that uh, he's been trying, you know. So I keep saying, stay tuned, stay tuned. And finally, you know, when uh, he obviously uh, sent in uh, the formal application. After doing considerable homework and, and putting a lot of things in place, you know, when this thing comes to fruition, so they're ready to go. So um, I said, uh, I told Michael, I said, I'm, I'm going to go with it. And he said, okay, Dad. And that's what I did. I said, it's formally out there. It's in the hands of the proper people. And, uh, and we are waiting for, uh, you know, for their decision. So, Mario, I know in your tweet, you, you have said, and I'm sure that Michael has now acknowledged this as well, is that everything's in place. You guys have everything you need to go to Formula One, essentially, unless I'm wrong about that. Well, exactly. I mean, that's the point. You know, we're not just new boys in town. I mean, it's just uh, uh, we know the prerequisites, and, and also uh, there's a time factor here. You know, with, uh, once you know, we said to go ahead, we got to go. And uh, so a lot of work has been done as far as we know where the, pro the property, where the, 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 you know, the, it's going to, you know, the facility is going to be built in, in, in the U.K. We know we have uh, people, uh, individuals, uh, the prominent individuals that have done this type of work, you know, as, as far as startups. Uh, we have a lot of things in line. We, we have uh, a, a fact that... Uh, it's we have a formal agreement now on the engine supplier, and then it's out there, and uh, so it's going to be Renault, and uh, where I'm allowed to say it now, and uh, and so uh, there were a lot of speculation, you know, even from uh, Toto Wolf, uh, con you know, that he was concerned about potentially being a Ferrari, where he would have Ferrari would have, you know, more votes than he would have, so on and so forth, so. There's, uh, you know, a, a lot of steps to take here, and I understand that. You know, it's a huge undertaking, but we're ready for it. You know, we have uh, incredible partners, you know, on our side, Michael does. And uh, we're there for the duration, you know, it's, um, and, you know, let's face it, uh, myself and, you know, I've been at it, you know, for 67 years now. So uh, we know what goes on on all sides of the Atlantic. and. Uh, and this is a great undertaking, wonderful undertaking on Michael's part. You know, he's been, he shows that he's very, very ambitious in the sport. It's, that's his, his business period. We live and breathe motor racing only. And um, he's at the age now that he has to make the, you know, the, the quantum leap, if you will, um, to be able to give it at least 20, 25 years, you know, good 25 years. You know, in the business, and um, and that's it. You know, the, so we're all in, and we're ready to go. So Mario, you you brought up the Renault connection, and now the Renault supply. Um, obviously, Alpine has some connections to you guys, particularly Fernando Alonso, who is a, obviously a two-time world champion, driven for you guys in IndyCar. How did that partnership kind of come about? We have a lot of friends there. You know, in, in Formula One, it's. Uh, you know, it's it's one big family type of thing, and uh, and Michael has been obviously um, uh, talking with the uh, with that group Alpine uh, to to, uh, to feel the sports car program and so on and so forth. So so there's a lot of moving parts here, and uh, and all of it all of it works, you know, ultimately. Uh, but um, again, you know, I think uh, we're uh, you know we're relying on a lot of good people, and uh, and. The they tell us about all the, you know, do we know the prerequisites? And we've checked every box, every box that has, you know, put out in front of us. So um, that's it. I mean, uh, that's all we can do. From an Andretti family perspective, obviously you're the 78 world champion. You qualified on pole in your first and last Grand Prix. Michael, unfortunately, did not have quite the opportunity that you did in Formula One. Is that dinner table conversation at Thanksgiving, are you guys, have you guys been planning a F1 return redemption for a while? 
Well, you know, Michael, obviously, <clears throat> I think he stepped out of the cockpit way too early. You know, I'm looking at my career vis-a-vis uh, -vis his. He was at the top of his game. and uh, But uh, I, you know, he just looked at, at more of the future in a sport. And uh, to become a, a, a team owner, you know, was something that was always in the back of his mind. Never mind, never in the back of my mind, but his. And he loved the business side of it. And uh, you can see he's cultivated. I mean, uh, I don't know how many uh, team owners are involved in as many disciplines as Michael is. And then, and uh, you can see that, uh, you know, even the road to Indy, you know, he's cultivated uh, talents right from that, but having teams, uh, you know, in the USF 2000 and, uh, you know, Indy Lights and so on and so forth. And, uh, and he's made the best of it. I mean, uh, you know, with, Look at the talent that that has demonstrated already, Colton Herta. You know, by you know having been, I mean, he was in Europe at 15 years of age, and he was driving alongside the, you know the established Formula One drivers right now, young uh, individuals like Lando Norris and so forth in Formula Four, and um, and as soon as and, and he went through the ranks and he won everything through the ranks, and then he gets to the top level here in the states and he wins there. Not by you know, strategy or by speed, pure speed, and I mean elegant, super driving, and um, and somebody like that. I mean, when when we were talking about, um, uh, it was almost done. You know, the deal with Sauber. He spent a week in their wind tunnel, and the third day he was quicker than uh, Giovinazzi and uh, Raikkonen had been on a on, on a simulator and I couldn't wait you know to to put him uh, in a formula 1 car uh, actually and it was going all was going to happen in Abu Dhabi but then the deal fell through you know at uh, and you know the the owners um, they wanted to um, you know they just they were going to stay on as 20% they wanted to have full control so you know there's no way we could go with that so and you mentioned Colton. Obviously, I mean, we know his talent watching him in IndyCar. You're a world champion. You're the second most winningest IndyCar driver of all time. What sets Colton apart from every other driver out there? Well, you, you, I can see the, the, the best thing about the quality that he has as a driver, he compensates. He doesn't need to have a perfect race car to be able to perform. And I've seen that over and over. He just gets on with it. And they, of course, you know, they try to get the best situation going, the best setup and everything. But at the end of the day, he doesn't despair if the car is not perfect. He'll go and find a way. And that's the quality of a champion. And quite honestly, uh, that's what he's been impressing me. And uh, in, in his own quiet, determined way, he just goes about it and gets a job done. Um, it's quality that's rare, believe me, and uh, it's to be appreciated. So, Mario, looking at IndyCar as a whole, obviously we're in year three of Roger Penske's ownership. What is your assessment of IndyCar, where it is right now, where it needs to go, and perhaps something that maybe needs to improve? Well, you can always improve things, but uh, I think uh, IndyCar is at a good place right now. Uh, I think uh, look at the teams, the, the quality of the teams, and then... Uh, the driving talent that we have. I mean, it's uh, uh, Colton has a lot of competition. I mean, look at the Alex Pello, you know, uh, out of the blue. You know, he comes and who does he beat? His teammate, who is the ultimate, you know, uh, IndyCar driver, you know, uh, <laughs> Scott Dixon. So, um, and there's something to be said for that, you know. So um, the future is bright, it's solid. I mean, uh, you know, uh, there. They're not the only two. They're only, I mean, it's like I said, they, I keep saying that uh, uh, IndyCar is armed with a lot of great young talent capable of winning right now. Uh, Pato Award, for instance, is another one. And, uh, but I hope I'm not, you know, I'm, I'm sure I'm leaving some out for sure. You can probably uh, chime those in. But, uh, but then you have uh, some veterans. They're still young enough to be around. Uh, a long time and so on and so forth and uh, so again the series is great uh, they provide some uh, phenomenal racing in my opinion and of course the diversity of the series something that we love ultimately so much I think um, uh, this 
could be argued, but uh, I can tell you that uh, the IndyCar champion is the most complete champion in motorsports. So Mario, we spent a little bit of time covering uh, Miami. We spent a little bit of time in, in Homestead and checking out the new Formula One circuit there. And that's something that's been very interesting to see over the last few years has been the growth of Formula One here in the United States. You were, you were there in the days of the bog at Watkins Glen. Um, what, is, what is your assessment of where the United States and Formula One and their relationship is right now? Well, it's, I, think, I think it probably is it's as good as ever in so many ways uh, because uh, I think it started with having a, a, a world-class facility at, uh, in Austin, you know, at CODA. Um, and then now, uh, because of that, I've seen a uh, track that there was, you know, the, uh, the, the amount of, uh, you know, the, uh, the amount of uh, fans that that attracted, you know, over the over the years and um, I mean it was spectacular last year you know over the over the three days they they claimed 400,000 you know there so uh, and then so uh, with that much interest uh, that piqued the interest of uh, an investment group over in Miami and uh, and so we're gonna have and they're investing it's supposed to be a temporary circuit but it's anything but I mean that the, it's a beautiful facility, the way that uh, they're going about it. So they're going to be there to stay. There's talk about a third race. Uh, and that's why I think uh, even from Formula One standpoint, uh, I think they, uh, not to get ahead of myself, but uh, the Netflix, uh, um, in, you know, the series that they've, they've had, uh, you know, Drive to Survive, uh, has really, really uh, brought about so much interest from even the younger set, uh, individuals, uh, young individuals that probably didn't really care about the sport, but it, it gave you so much of the insight and uh, it piqued a lot of curiosity. And uh, so all of these elements has, has been working. And I think probably, uh, the, I think in so many ways, uh, I've been saying this, that uh, the, the Formula One fan base in America is somewhat underestimated. Uh, and that's a good thing because uh, uh, a lot of it has been aw awakened, and we see that. And uh, so, and we want to be part of it as an American team. We want to be able to to contribute and grow, you know, in that area as well with with Formula One. It's uh, you know to revisit on that. I mean, it's uh, uh, my son Michael's his ultimate goal, the most ambitious one. And why not? You know, I'm proud of him that um, he's, uh, you know, he, he's not afraid to, to tackle it. You know, while we were down there in Miami, I kind of want to go back in time because while we were down in Miami with our coverage, we actually explored a track that you raced on in the 80s, Tamiami Park. Believe it or not, there's a lot of that track still there. I just wanted, since you're here, to ask you what your memories of Tamiami were. Did you like that track? Was it a difficult track? Um, because you can still drive on it today. Yeah, well, uh, obviously, I think uh, it's another one of those venues that uh, you wish it could have been continued to be, to co to be cultivated. But sometimes uh, when you uh, get into these, uh, um, you know, temporary uh, street events, uh, the, the political side sometimes doesn't know where to go, so it becomes a, a tough sell, you know, if you will. But uh, but again, uh, I was happy that I had the opportunity to be to be part of it for a couple of years. You know, I raced on it. And I think it was really well laid out uh, course, quite honestly. Um, even my uh, younger son, Jeff, raced there. He raced the ARS series, and I think he won there also, uh, race. And uh, so, yeah, yeah, it's, uh, I look back at uh, all of these events and all of those, uh, you know, that the war and then disappeared. and. And I just, uh, you know, love the fact that I had the opportunity to be part of it. Speaking of something that's disappearing, this is kind of way off the grid. But again, while we were in Miami, we went to, we explored one of the, the last four Kmart stores in the country. And that was a longtime sponsor for you. It seems like this may be the last year. Do you have any comment on that? And, you know, do you have any ideas of why that business didn't work? Oh, I wish I did. I would bottle it and sell it. You know, it's just uh, we developed a great relationship with it at that time. Uh, the the chairman and CEO of Kmart, which was uh, Joe Antonini, uh, who has actually been operating my winery when he retired. So uh, we 
it's a friendship that uh, lasted a long time and at the time you know we I think we brought about uh, uh, what they were needing I mean as far as uh, uh, they, you know they, they felt that we were they were getting uh, 10 to 12 times the value of what they were putting into the sport as far as exposure and all that so uh, I think we we did our part you know along with uh, Paul Newman being involved and so forth. And we did, you know, winning for them. If, you know, I had nothing better than that. So a great relationship, as you can imagine, at, at the time. Um, and it's too bad to see a venerable brand, venerable brand like that, you know, to disappear all of a sudden. But that, uh, uh, you know, the competition is fierce everywhere, and uh, obviously some mistakes were made, or uh, you know, sometimes if you don't keep pace with, uh, you know daily progress that goes on in any business, uh, you know, you're going to be, you're going to be swallowed, you know, by the competition. So my final question, you have been so active in the last, you know, cu couple decades now, I guess, driving the two-seater. Uh, tell me about your experience with that, because it looked like it was going to go away there for a little while. It's come back. Um, how much are you still enjoying doing that every weekend? I love it. I, I love the opportunity. Uh, it's 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 a wonderful program. I don't know a better program to expose to expose our sport, you know, in so many ways. The uh, the comments that I keep getting every single day, you know, in in my walk of life, uh, people that have been there, people that want to be there, and uh, you know, individual press that have uh, now have probably a, a new appreciation for what's going on in the sport because it's, it's such a non-participant sport, you know. Um, and it's not like a ball and stick or even, you know, uh, tennis or golf and so forth. We can go out there and, you know, and just uh, pretend to be somebody. But in, uh, how many people get in a race car? You know, honestly, I mean, we, uh, you know, you, yeah, you can get in these driving schools and so on and so forth. But uh, you, you will not experience the speed that you do, uh, you know, with some of the drivers that we have, that they have in the uh, in, and the inexperience, in the experience and the equipment is immaculate. Um, and from my standpoint, I just uh, it gives me reason to um, you know to stay somewhat in shape and so forth. And uh, but um, I just again I enjoy it and I love to see people come away with a smile after we give them a little bit of a ride. Thank you, Mario.